In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create a responsive Flexbox navigation that just responds to the width, and these boxes will evenly uh, change their size as you resize the uh, window size in here very evenly. So this is done with Flexbox. We'll also use some JavaScript to change the order of these containers here. So you click on Change Order, and you'll see that one, two, three, four, five, six. Not only does the order change, but they also uh, change into a column, and this is all done with Flexbox as well. We're going to be referencing the CSS tricks complete guide to Flexbox. Also, we're going to be using a classless property in JavaScript uh, to, to toggle a class. And we're going to be using an event uh, listener uh, to uh, assign to, the, to that button here, change order, to be able to uh, make this change. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so right now what I, what I want to do is add a navigation menu to this page. I'm going to do this with Flexbox. So the first thing we'll need to do is right below the header tag here, let's go ahead and add a nav tag give this a class of site menu. Let's go ahead and close that nav tag. Perfect. Let's go ahead and put some links in here. Okay, and we'll do this one at home. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to keep this all on the same line to avoid any space issues. Uh, so for example, as you can see here, they're all uh, nice, nice and tight, but if I uh, hit the return key, after each link here, you'll see there's a little gap that appears right over here. So just something to be aware of uh, if you're styling the page and something looks off, that's that could be why. So just uh, be mindful of that. So I'm just keep going to keep everything on the same line. Uh, okay, looks good. So we have home. We'll do an about. We'll do also work, and we'll also do contact. So we won't be needing the last one. So let's go ahead and remove that. Perfect. Okay, very good. So now we have a nav tag and we have uh, four links inside. So what I want to do is have this kind of go across the page here. So in my CSS, I'm going to scroll down to the very uh, end over here. Let's go ahead and target that site menu. And what I'm going to do is give this a border just so we can see it. Solid red. So there's that border. So the nav tag, you see it's a block level item, so it goes edge to edge, but the links inside are inline level. But what we're actually going to do is do display flex on the container site menu, meaning that the links inside have become flexbox items. Uh, there's a great uh, web page here, a complete guide to flexbox on CSS Tricks website. Um, definitely a great uh, guide or reference, if you will, when you're working with Flexbox because there are quite a few different properties in Flexbox. And the way they sort of uh, organize this uh, documentation page, so you have the purple containers, which is in reference to the Flexbox container, and you have this sort of a light yellow beige uh, colored containers, which is in reference to Flexbox items. So you have Flex containers and we have Flex items. So in our case, since we just identified site menu as uh, display flex, all the items inside have become flex box items. So let's go ahead and put a, a border on those items just so we could sort of see it visually what's going on with them. Border one pixel, I'll just give it blue. Uh, ooh. Let's do A. There we go. So there the blue links are now inside. So what I really want these to be is take up the full space here so they're not um, uh, wasting all this space over here, if you will. So if we look at this guide here, we're looking for something called Flex Grow right over here. So this will do is it'll take up the space. So let's go to do that now. And because this is a light yellow color container, I know this is something we need to apply to the flex box items. So this would be something right here. So let's do Flex Grow equals one. So when you do that, you see all of them get spaced out evenly. They are responsive. Let's also go ahead and do Text Align equals Center. And because the links are themselves are now flexbox items, uh, we actually we can go ahead and put uh, padding on it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's just do one rem. Perfect. So now these are very nice uh, links uh, that you can click on, uh, and you have all this space around them. So we can even give this a background border, green text decoration equals none, and let's also give a nice hover effect when you mouse over each of these links. Oops. Okay. And what we'll do is background, uh, let's say blue, and then we'll change the color to white. So when you hover each of these links, you have this nice effect here. We can actually go ahead and get rid of that border now. We don't really need to see that. We can get rid of the border on the container as well. 
So there we are. So these, this is a nice responsive uh, uh, menu, if you will. Uh, actually, let's go to put that border back on the links, just so we could sort of see. Let's do solid, and we'll actually give it white. Perfect, so there's that little effect, if you will. So now we have our menus good to go. They're in a flex box, so they respond to the sizes because we did flex grow. You'll see that the sizes here will change automatically, taking up the space equally among each of the links themselves. It's very nice. Uh, one of the things you could do with Flexbox, which is really cool, is that because you have it organized here, and maybe this is good uh, organization in terms of the DOM, if you will, because this is how you want the links to appear, let's say without a style sheet. So for instance, if the style sheet didn't load, these links would show up in this order. But let's say you want to actually change this order. You could actually do that with Flexbox. So let me show you how to do that here. So if you look back over here, there's a, a property called order. Let's see, let's see if we can spot it. Uh, I believe it's at the, actually at the top. Here it is, order, right over here. So you can actually specify each of those items in their order. So what we're going to do is use an nth child selector. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to grab this. Since we have four of them, we can actually specify all four. So what we do is nth child one. And we're going to copy this three more times. Two, three, perfect. So we have two, three, and four. And because these are Flexbox items now, I can use the property order. So we can actually make this, for instance, four. So now this will go to the end, see it right over here. We could do the next one, order, let's say this is now three. And let's change this order to uh, one, and let's change this order to Two. So now, as you can see, it's very easy to change the order of each of these flex items uh, to have them be in any order you want instead of having to actually change the HTML code. So you can keep the HTML code as is, uh, but then you can also use Flexbox to change the order. Pretty cool. So you do stuff like that as well. Uh, okay, very good. So now that we have our links set up, what I want to do is create a button and we do a little bit of JavaScript. And what I want to do is take advantage of Flexbox in terms of ordering. So here we were able to order things uh, using the order property. And this is kind of you sort of specify exactly what order you want them to be in. Uh, Flexbox does have uh, another way of ordering things. So let's say here, if we look at uh, flex direction here, you can actually change the, you can reverse the order. So you can go row reverse. So you have row, which is the default, but then you can do row reverse. So they'll appear uh, in the opposite order. So what I'm gonna do now is select all of this here and you can use a shortcut to go ahead and comment that out in um, on a Windows machine. It's uh, control forward slash. And I believe on Mac it's a command forward slash. So you can do that. Uh, it's just a comment that's out so we won't be needing that. So we have the default order again. So if we go back here at the top, look at that display flex container so if you reference this guide here, you'll see that flex directions in the purple container, the light purple container, meaning that this property flex direction belongs in the flex box container. In our case, that's the site menu here. So we'll do flex direction row reverse. And as you can see here, everything just got reversed. So wouldn't it be great if we can control this property with JavaScript? So that way you can click a button and maybe change the order of our um, our uh, movie uh, posters here. So instead of having a one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll have a six, five, four, et cetera. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna erase this here, just leave it as a default. And what we wanna do now, I'm gonna click save, is add a button which is gonna control our um, our uh, order. So let's go ahead and add that button right below that site menu. So let's go ahead and add it right over here. Button, click. And I'm gonna get, uh, instead of a class, I'm actually gonna give this order. Uh, rather, I'm actually going to give this an ID because we're going to be interfacing with JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that here. I'm using camel casing here. So let's, let's see here, change order. We'll call this button change order. Close that button. So it should be right over here. Uh, let's go ahead and target that button here. Let's scroll to the very bottom here. There we are. And let's give this, uh, let's see here. Um, just want to give it some spacing around it. So let's do margin, uh, three rem auto. Okay, and let's give this uh, display block, oops, inline block. Very good, so it should be, oops, back to block. 
Okay, there we are in the center, very good. So now we have a button. So what we wanna do is click on this button and have the order here change. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do this with JavaScript. And as you saw uh, before, what we actually did is included a class um, rather, we change the um, uh, flex box here, the flex direction to row reverse. So we kind of want to do the same thing here by swapping out our class, class every time you click on this change order. So first things first, we need to identify where this um, this, this flex box container is. So if we look at our HTML code, we see that this is the movies container. So that appears to be the flex box container. So if we scroll up, here it is here. So just to, to experiment flex direction equals row reverse let's see what happens so as you can see here things got reordered three two one six five four ah because for each row it gets uh each row gets reversed so for example if i were to because i believe we have flex wrap yes we do so let's go ahead and remove this flex wrap okay you see there it is here so basically what row reverse will do is actually reverse uh per row keep that in mind as well okay good okay so that's a very important distinction to remember so that if you use flex uh, wrap uh, each row and that becomes sort of independent if you will so if you do a flex direction row reverse it will identify each row uh, from left to right and reverse it so what I would rather have it do is kind of reverse it from the very end to the very bottom so what I want to actually do is change this to flex direction uh, let's go ahead and do column so there it is in one column here, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and reference uh, our um, documentation page. So we just changed this to column. What we also want to do is column reverse. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. So now this is now reversed, and we could also center this by using flexbox as well. So now this is heading down. So what we want to do is use align items to center. So that will center the items uh, inside our container here and they'll put it in reverse. So really, we need these two properties to be sort of toggled, if you will, with JavaScript anytime you click on change order. So let's go ahead and create a new class and we'll just call this one change order. And we'll move the, this class, or rather the, these uh, properties here inside change order. Very good. So basically what we want to do is somebody clicks on this button here and this class of change order gets applied to the movies container. So if I paste it in here, you'll see it applied. There it goes. And when you click on that again, this class will be removed, essentially removing this reor reorganizing, if you will. But we'll need to do this with JavaScript. So let's go to open up our JavaScript panel. Make sure you're saving along as you progress. So the first thing we want to do is target, uh, rather create some variables to use. So let's do that first. So a variable, we'll call this one um, the change order um, button, change order btn. Again, I'm using camel case here. You can name the variables anything you like. We're going to use uh, document dot query selector. Query selector is very similar to jQuery in the sense that you can select classes, IDs, things like that. You don't have to be specific about it. So in our case, we want to target that button. So the button we gave it order ID. So look, let's go ahead and put the ID in here. So now we've targeted that button, very good. So the next thing we want to do is target the uh, the um, movies container because that's the container we want to toggle uh, this class change order. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you can create another variable and you know give it a name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just to save some time, instead of a semicolon at the end, I'll just put a comma here, and now we'll just do um, movies container variable. So this is the same thing if I were to just to write out a variable here, but instead of having a semicolon at the end, just put a comma, you can just add as many variables as you like. So we'll do the same thing here, document query selector. Very good, and what we wanna do is target the movies container class, which is right over here, copy that. I'm always copying and pasting things instead of having to rewrite it. That just avoids uh, typos and things like that. Very good, so the next thing I wanna do is create a function. And we'll call this function change order. Okay, and this function, what, what this will do is target the movies container. And it'll we'll use the class list property, class list. In our case, what we want to do is toggle. And what we want to toggle is the class name. In our case, it's going to be change order. It's going to place that in here. Very good. So don't 
keep, be mindful, don't put a period in here because we're identifying this as a class already. So no, no need to put a period in here. It won't work otherwise. So now let's go ahead and add an event listener to that button. So anytime you click this button, it'll run this function here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So uh, we wanna target this button here, change um, order button, which is this button right over here. We wanna add an event listener, add an event listener and meaning that this is going to listen for an event in our case we need to specify what event it is in our case it's going to be a click and then what's going to happen after that it's going to run a function in our case it's called change order so there's that function so anytime you click this link uh, rather you click this button with a click event it'll run this function change order so let's go ahead and give this a shot if you click on this change order button you see the order just gets changed and all what's really happening behind the scenes is that this class of change order gets applied to the container um, of the movies container and it just gets toggled so you click on it it gets added you click on it one more time it gets removed so on and so forth okay and that's it